One of the president's main agenda items, as you just heard there, is North Korea denuclearization. A big part of that effort is South Korean President Moon Jae-in, who just wrapped up his own me meeting with Chairman Kim in North Korea. I talked with the South Korean president earlier today. Yesterday, President Trump, before the signing of the new trade agreement, said this. A lot of very positive things are happening with Chairman Kim of North Korea. Do you expect another summit between President Trump and Chairman Kim in coming weeks? Uh, well, I would say yes. Um, I traveled to Pyongyang last week and had a very good uh, meeting with Chairman Kim. And uh, through the uh, summit meeting, uh, we had achieved some progress on denuclearization. And I look forward uh, to a summit a meeting taking place between Chairman Kim and President Trump in the not too distant future. Before the end of the year? Yes, I believe so. Mr. President, there is concern in the U.S. that maybe too much is being given up before actual denuclearization is happening in North Korea. How do you address that? There are many skeptical voices as to whether North Korea will actually keep their promise uh, this time. And However, I, I have to tell you that uh, the agreement that we have right now is actually completely different from what we had in the past. For the first time in history, uh, you have seen the President of the United States and the Supreme Leader of North Korea uh, thresh out an agreement through a summit meeting, and they uh, made a promise in front of the whole world uh, to uh, which is binding and they have lots of responsibility on their shoulders. I believe that this promise uh, will be kept. In terms of North Korea, uh, they can only have sanctions relief after denuclearization is completed and through this uh, they can uh, have the economic recovery that they are desiring. As for President Trump, he needs to solve the North, North Korean nuclear problem. Uh, this is a problem that nobody had been able to solve in the decades past. So uh, through this he will be able to have a major achievement. Which is your top priority, reunification or denuclearization? My priority is peace. And if we have solid peace, then I believe that we, uh, unification will come naturally as well. And uh, in, in order to achieve peace, the prerequisite would be denuclearization. What is your relationship with President Trump and how would you describe him? Ever since my inauguration last May, uh, I had uh, seven summit meetings with President Trump, as well as uh, more than 20 uh, phone calls. Uh, I can tell you that I've become more than a friend with President Trump, and between the two of us, uh, there is absolutely perfect trust. And when you uh, think about uh, what uh, President Trump has accomplished in, in terms of North Korea's denuclearization, you just have to look at uh, the changes that have been in place uh, during the uh, nine months ever since uh, last November. And if you compare what uh, President Trump uh, said during his speech at the UN General Assembly last year. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. And what he'll be saying today. Tremendous progress has been made. And I think you're going to see an outcome. Then you'll be able to uh, distinguish the differences. And uh, ever since last November, uh, North Korea has not been has not engaged in any nuclear or uh, missile test and, or any provocations of this kind. And they have already uh, permanently dismantled uh, the nuclear test site in Punggye-ri. And this is actually the only nuclear test site they have, which means that they will not be able to have another nuclear test in the future. And during my summit meeting with Chairman Kim in Pyongyang last week. He also um, expressed his willingness to permanently dismantle uh, the missile engine test site and the launch platform in Dongchangni under observation of American experts. And when he implements these measures, this will mean that uh, North Korea will not be able uh, to test long-range missiles again. So uh, now, uh, all, all of this means that North Korea will not be able to threaten the United States with uh, their nuclear or uh, missile uh, arsenal, he is actually willing uh, to take additional measures, including the dismantlement of the nuclear uh, bases in Yanbian. And all of this change that we are witnessing right now uh, uh, was possible because uh, the, uh, the President of the United States decided to have uh, the first ever uh, summit with uh, the leader of the North Korea in 70 years of their history. All of my praise goes to President Trump. So you give him a lot of credit. Yes. You've met with Chairman Kim 
more than most people in the world. Uh, how do you describe him, his sensibilities? Is he serious? Do you really believe that he could denuclearize his, the North fully? Or is that uh, something that really is the identity of North Korea? Chairman Kim uh, has a great, uh, has unwavering trust and expectations for President Trump, and uh, he is also aware that um, the complete denuclearization of North Korea, uh, such a, a major feat, can only be achieved by someone like President Trump. Uh, so, uh, Chairman Kim actually wants uh, within uh, to uh, achieve the complete denuclearization of North Korea with President Trump within his first term in office, and. Uh, he has expressed this commitment, this desire on many occasions too. So in order to make progress, he wants to have the second U.S.-North Korea summit as soon as possible. I would say that Chairman Kim is young, but he's candid, and he also has clear commitment to, de to denuclearization. And he is now ready to abandon his nuclear program and focus on economic development instead in order to help his people. He has this kind of a strategic mind. Uh, so. Um, he is looking forward uh, to achieving complete denuclearization with President Trump and uh, afterwards uh, receive economic assistance. Do you think that full verifiable denuclearization, the goal of January 2021 that has been talked about, is that realistic? It seems like a lot to go in a short period of time. During my summit meeting in Pyongyang, uh, Chairman Kim uh, mentioned he is willing to have the international inspectors uh, inspect these uh, activities. He said that he's willing to uh, permanently dismantle the related facilities in a verifiable way. Uh, so I believe that um, I have ascertained uh, Chairman Kim's uh, commitment to uh, complete denuclearization. Uh, therefore, um, now if uh, North Korea uh, takes a genuine uh, measures in terms of uh, dismantling their nuclear pro program. It all comes down to uh, whether the United States is ready to provide corresponding measures uh, in a swift way. For the United States, uh, they promised to end its hostile relations with, the, with North Korea, to provide uh, security guarantees and also work towards a new uh, U.S.-North Korea relations. So although all these actions would not happen simultaneously, uh, uh, broadly, I believe that uh, these actions need to be taken in parallel. If the United States could provide this kind of trust, I believe that we will be able to accelerate uh, the denuclearization process. Uh, this, uh, this is why I believe that um, uh, the denuclearization is achievable within the first term of President uh, Trump's uh, term. Do you trust Chairman Kim? From a U.S. perspective, he does not have a great track record of promising and then delivering on things. Um, so uh, what we hear from the U.S. administration is that they would like to see things done completely and then pull the sanctions off. When we say corresponding measures, uh, this doesn't only allude uh, to a sanctions relief. Uh, we could think about uh, the declaration to end the Korean War or humanitarian assist assistance or the exchanges, uh, well, uh, the cultural and artistic exchanges uh, and uh, such kind of uh, non-political exchanges. Uh, so we could think about uh, establishing a, a, a U.S. Uh, liaison office in Pyongyang, uh, by establish, establishing this kind of office, uh, we can uh, show uh, the U.S. commitment to end hostile relations with North Korea and also logistically support uh, the, uh, the activities of uh, the, the inspectors. And we could also think about exchanging uh, economic delegations with North Korea. I can tell you that there is nothing to lose for us uh, when uh, we put our trust in North Korea. And the measures that North Korea will be taking uh, will be will be the permanent dismantlement of uh, nuclear uh, test site, the missile engine test site, nuclear bases and uh, its uh, existing uh, nuclear arsenal. These are all irreversible uh, measures. However, the measures the United States and the Republic of Korea will be taking uh, would be measures such as uh, the suspension of joint military exercises, which can be resumed at any time, and also the end of war declaration uh, can be uh, revoked any time as well. If uh, North Korea uh, goes back on its promise, then uh, we can put on these sanctions once again, the United States has nothing to lose. Do you envision seeing one Korea in your lifetime?
Well, it is uh, very difficult to predict uh, when uh, unification will be achieved. Uh, we cannot really plan for this kind of thing. I believe that if we establish complete peace, then we will be able to see one day uh, all of a sudden uh, the unification come. And I'm hopeful that I will be able to see it within my lifetime. The U.S. has had troops on the Korean Peninsula for 60 plus years. Do you want to see U.S. troops leave? sooner rather than later? Uh, I would say no. I can tell you that uh, the U.S. forces in Korea not only is beneficial for uh, our deterrence vis-a-vis uh, -vis North Korea, but also it's playing a linchpin role in terms of upholding peace and uh, stability in the Northeast Asian uh, region as a whole. Even after uh, the peace treaty is signed and even after unification is achieved, uh, I can see the U.S. forces in Korea uh, remain in place uh, for the uh, peace and stability of the North uh, East Asian region. You mentioned the end of war declaration. Do you expect to sign that at this next summit with President Trump? I had ample discussions with President Trump uh, on this issue uh, during my summit yesterday, and I expect uh, there will be uh, plenty of discussions between President Trump and Chairman Kim uh, in the upcoming uh, U.S.-North Korea summit. It is uh, my desire to uh, sign this uh, as soon as possible uh, to uh, give a symbol uh, that uh, the uh, hostile relations between the United States and North Korea have been ended, and I believe that there is a, a basic sympathy uh, regarding this view. I want you to address some of your critics um, in Korea um, uh, and a couple of uh, points. They say that you've been clamping down on journalists and, and muzzling North Korean defectors. And your critics say that, uh, that you're undermining free speech there and, and democratic norms. How do you respond to that? Yeah, I'm uh, well, I can tell you that maybe um, out of the entire history of the Republic of Korea, uh, the, uh, the freedom of speech and the freedom of press have never uh, been uh, greater uh, than this time. And, and even uh, the kind of fake news uh, that you're seeing in, uh, among the press and among the SNS, uh, they go unpunished as well. And uh, every weekend you can see uh, in uh, the Gwangamun uh, Plaza, which is just right in front of my uh, office, you can see um, the uh, assembly assemblies that uh, heavily criticize me uh, happen every weekend. Your critics are, their theory is that you're trying to line South Korea up with North Korea in getting ready for reunification, to the extent of even taking freedom out of textbooks, uh, not tying it to democracy. So you say, in the words of President Trump, that's all fake news. Our object objective of improving relations with North Korea and aspiring for unification is actually the same across all administrations. And the, our constitution actually pre prescribes that we need to work towards uh, p achieving peaceful reunification with North Korea. And it is one of the prime responsibilities uh, uh, of a president. And as for uh, the people who criticize me, I can tell you that most of them uh, are people who uh, in past and administrations administrations had been calling reunification as some kind of a bonanza, uh, but now they are turning on me because uh, the, the, the government has changed. Mr. President, we appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you.